Hey, hey, System Call Charlie Gags doing it. It's me, Johnny Sports, and welcome back to the Crystal Palace career mode. This is the beginning of season two. The hype is real, boys. Thank you so much for being here for the beginning of this season, guys. Before we even get into anything, um, can I just mention one thing really quick? I don't know if a lot of you guys are aware of, aware of this. You probably should be aware of this. Um, there was a terrorist attack in New Zealand and um, uh, a lot of people have passed away. It, it's, it's something where I actually woke up early in this morning and thought to myself, do I want to record yes or no? Do I want to basically continue living my life the way I do or sit there and think about things and just like stop doing what I normally do. And I guess this is what people that do these terrible acts want to happen. They want life to stand still for everyone. They want to affect everyone's lives. I can only say one thing, rest in peace to everyone who has passed away during that shooting in New Zealand. If you are living in New Zealand, I hope you guys are safe. I hope your family is safe. It's a terrible, terrible thing that happened. But um, the best thing we can do as people who live in a normal society is to continue living our lives the way that we do and not get scared of things like this and uh, let them influence our own lifestyle. So um, rest in peace to those people that have passed away. My thoughts are with the families over there in um, New Zealand. It's a terrible, terrible thing. But um, yeah, let's move on. Let's not let them beat our lifestyles and our basically what we do, what we like to do, what we love and what we enjoy. So yeah. Rest in peace to those people. Thank you for listening to that message right there. But let's get back into a positive mood. Let's try and like um, do our best in this beginning of season two. It is going to be a very interesting season. Last season, as you guys know, we have been chasing fan objectives. And by the way, this is episode 37. That is Dutch for 37. And I think I actually pronounced it pretty well. And if you guys are excited about season two, boys, I'd be much appreciated if you guys could hit that like button on this video. Let's see what we can reach with this video. If we can get to over 3000 likes, I'd be very, very happy, guys. Let's keep going. Let's continue the madness on this career mode. In terms of fan objectives, guys, we need new ones. If you look at the, at the ones from last season, you will see that five out of six have been achieved. Yes, we have achieved most of the objectives and the most important one, the goal machine, I've, I've achieved because I am now not doing five Fortnite dances on camera. The only thing that we have to do is we have to bring back Milivojevic and play him for at least 10 games. And I think Milivojevic will come in in the position where Kuyate is right now. We can go into the transfer hub and see the man that I absolutely hated using. He was basically the San Jose of this career mode. He's currently playing for Tottenham. We will sign him in just a bit. But let's go into other comments right here from the last episode. Just Neil says, imagine Johnny dancing with his dog after scoring those volleys. Legit, like what I was doing was I scored that volley with Townsend against Manchester City. And of course, Townsend against City, you guys know the story. He has scored an insane goal against them already in this season. Uh, I stood up. I was basically just walking in my room in silence and sat down on my couch and hid behind this seat. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> that's basically what I was doing. So um, there you go. That is um, what happened. You don't have to imagine anymore, but hey, I would have liked to dance with my dog. Here's another thing. Scott Miller says, what do you think about Eder Militao signing for Madrid now? Eder Militao from Porto has joined Real Madrid. Yes, that is true. He has been signed for 50 million. Now, here's the deal though, boys. We wanted to sign him. We have scouted him throughout this entire year and we want to bring him into our team. And that is exactly what we are going to do in this season. He will bring a little bit of competition into that centre-back position in between him, Hermoso and Gbamin. Those three will be fighting for the starting 11 spots. And of course, one of them will be joining the reserves team in that centre-back position, which will replace Tomiyasu. So that is going to be easy. Now, we're going to jump into the negotiations with Milivojevic first. Fan objectives, boys. I need all of you to go down to the comments down below. Let me know 
What kind of fan objectives do you want to see this season? We have six spots open. Hashtag fan objective in the comments down below. That would be very, very much appreciated. As always, this is the biggest part of our career modes this season. That is the most exciting part about our career mode this season. And um, I'm going to tell you this. We're going for all the trophies this year. I want to win all of the trophies. I want to go and win the Champions League. I want to win the Premier League. I want to win the FA Cup. I don't want to win the Carabao Cup. That cup is just trash. So go ahead and leave your comments down below um, after watching this episode because yes, we will be making transfers. So those transfers could be included in the fan objectives as well. So let's go ahead and offer a transfer fee. Actually, no. Can I offer them Tomiyasu? That would be great. If I can offer them Tomiyasu, who I want to get rid of anyways. Uh, they are looking to bring in a striker, a fullback, or a goalkeeper. Now let's check out what we have. What do we have at striker? We have these two. That's not happening. Fullbacks. We have... Oh, Van Aanholt. Yeah, we can get rid of Van Aanholt if needed. That's the one. That's the one, boys. Van Aanholt is going. Let's put him in there. And let's see. Because that is another one that we are trying to replace this season. Okay. They, what? Okay, they don't, they don't want Van Aanholt. All right, then uh, we'll go ahead and offer a transfer fee. This is not working out. I actually have to sign Milivojevic for money. Um, I'm going to offer them 11 million because the guy is not worth anything. Let's be honest. I'm actually, for the first time ever, offering below the value. They're saying they want 14 million for him. This is ridiculous. And as you can see in the top left, boys, we have 134 million in our budget. That is great, isn't it? I can't wait to use that money to improve our team. I can't believe that I'm buying back this guy into the club, but it's happening. Milivojevic is joining. And by the way, I didn't really properly talk about Scott Miller's comment where he said, what do you think about Edem Reditao signing for Madrid? I think it's a great signing for Real Madrid. It's uh, definitely one for the future. People are thinking though, where is he going to play? Is he actually going to play right back, left back, center back? What is he going to do? I'm actually excited to see what he can do. At least he will be an amazing backup to Ramos and Baran, and there will be a little bit more competition in that center back position. And I think it will raise the level of performances of anyone that plays in a starting lineup because they know there is a beast of a center back behind them now the squad role for um, him is not gonna be important dude you're gonna be a rotation player be happy with that no he's not happy with that okay well I guess I have to accept the thing is I have to play Milivojevic for 10 games as you know I'm quite surprised though that we are able to buy him back because Normally, um, whenever I sell a player, or in the past, whenever I sold a player, I wasn't really able to sign them back most of the time. So this is interesting. We're going to disregard the release clause. He's getting 85k. I'm going to offer him 80k. Yeah, I mean, come on. It's it's too much already. I'm spending too much on you, Milivojevic. Just accept. There you go. Welcome back to the club. I don't even want to give you any more time on the screen. Bye-bye. Bye bye. So let me go back into the budget and show you guys how things are looking at the moment. We have around, let's say, 200k in the wage budget, 112 million in the transfer budget. And if we do go into the transfer hub, you guys will see a lot of candidates that we have been scouting and looking at in the past. And there's a bunch of really, really talented players. One that I personally am very interested in still is Jovic. I would love to bring him into the team, but then that completely destroys the dynamic in our squad. We have Nakajima playing out of his mind down that left-hand side. We have Zaha who has become the top scorer. We have Tsigankov who has gotten over 20 goal contributions this season. Joao Felix is not going to be moved from that camp position. So it sucks that we can't bring Jovic in, but Here's the deal. Maybe I change my formation. Maybe I go for something else. Maybe maybe I go full out attacking. Maybe that's the thing that we need to do. Can we somehow switch to a 4-4-2 four, four, or something like that where we have two attackers up front, which would allow us to bring in um, the main man, Jovic. Is there anything I can possibly do? I think this is what I can do. Yes, this is what I can do, boys. We can go 4-1-2-1-2 one, two, one, two wide. This would be a formation that we can go for, for sure. Or I go like this for triple two. But then Joao Felix is not going to be playing central. He's going to play a little bit more down the wings. Or I play Sander Berger and Joao Felix at CDM. But that is probably not the best thing to do. This is this is a hard decision to make. The 4 one 2 one 2 wide seems like the perfect decision to make. Or we go with the 4 one 3 2 
which allows us to put Joao at centre mid, where he's going to be involved a lot more in what's happening on the pitch. I think I'm going to go for this. Oh, this is the reserves team. Oops. Let's go back into the first team. That's where we need to change it. We're going to go into the 4 3 1 2. Was it this one? Yeah, 4 1 3 2. Sorry, that one. We're going to select the positions right now. Now, Nakajima is going to play down the wings as usual. Tigankov is going to stick to his right hand side. Nandez is going to drop out of the team. As much as I hate to do it, Nandez, you're an absolute beast, but your time has come to move on to the bench. And Sander Berger is just so good defensively, so I can't let him go. I know this is going to be bad for our defense. I know that is something that we need to think about, but I would love to bring in Jovic. You guys have been suggesting him for such a long time, and now there's an opening for him to join our squad. So that is something that I'm looking forward to. We can switch to this formation we can still use most of our main players make it happen Nandes is going to be on the bench but it's going to be fine let's jump into the transfer hub and let's try and sign one of the best strikers in this game and in the world right now Jovic is on a ridiculous form for Eintracht they have just beaten Inter in the Europa League and they are looking like favorites in that competition alongside of other big teams obviously but I truly believe Eintracht have an amazing attack especially Rebic, Jovic, Kostic those players they are doing an amazing job for their team so Jovic it's time to try and sign you my friend 42 million is his value this is going to be the biggest transfer of the season if it does happen. Let's see if we can sign him. And I really hope we can get him into the squad. I'm going to put an offer in. Uh, he joined in the first season, so his contract has already run one year at least. I'm guessing he probably got a four-year contract, which means he still has three years left. So they're going to ask for a lot of money here. We're going to offer 55. I think they might just run away after I offer this. I'm kind of scared that they might just stand up and leave. But we're going to see what they say. 55 million. Okay, good, good. They come back with 59.9. That's not bad at all. How about we go 50 million and a sell-on clause of 20%. How about that? Let's, let's drag it down as much as possible. No, they're sticking to the 59 million. Now, I'm going to say... I'm going to say 57.5. All right, let's make it happen. Jovic, come into the Crystal Palace team, please. Please, it would be such a massive signing. Yes, come on. That's going to be the biggest signing of this season. Jovic is going to join the team if he does accept the contract offers. If I don't completely bottle it, boys. Now, we don't have any idea what his wages are. Hopefully we do when we go into, into negotiations. This could be a massive one, boys. Five-star weak foot and an amazing finisher. And the guy is just a pure talent. Luka Jovic. Let's try and get him. I honestly wouldn't mind if Liverpool would sign Jovic if they can't get Timo Werner. This guy is a very, very talented player. And I think he would fit right into the Liverpool squad. Uh, we're going to say he's going to be a crucial first-team player, obviously, to play alongside Zaha. And that is what they were hoping for. We're going to continue right here. Five-year contract. That's going to be good enough. That is perfect. And then no release clause. Hey, that's just perfect. Now, please ask for the wages as well. Yes, they are asking for the wages. Perfect. We can just go ahead, remove the bonus and submit the offer. They're probably going to ask for a little bit more on their wages, but that's going to be... No, they accept it. Luka Jovic is now a part of the Crystal Palace team. We wanted to sign him last season, but he just had joined um, the team of Valencia. Now, we have brought him into the team, boys. This is a massive, massive signing. This is a big step forward in terms of what we can achieve next season, boys. Luka Jovic is in the squad take a look at these stats right here 84 attack positioning 82 ag acceleration 77 agility um 81 sprint speed decent amount of stamina good strength good reactions great ball control amazing finishing that's the key stat if you guys remember how good Belotti was for me at AC Milan you will know that this guy is going to be something special amazing volleys as well oh yes I'm going to abuse that with the flick ups this guy is going to be special. Come on, Crystal Palace. 
make a massive, massive signing. Okay, so now after we have brought in the biggest signing of the season, potentially, we are also looking at selling some players. If you guys do remember, I said I wanted to move on a couple of players this season, and I'm going to show you which ones it is. Now we go into the value, we sort it like that. Joao Felix and Jovic are the biggest players in our team at the moment. Felix with a 46 million price tag, the same as Jovic. And then Zaha is going to play alongside Jovic. That partnership is going to be a lot of fun, I can already tell. Um, Sander Berger has been nothing but incredible in that CDM spot. He's going to continue doing so. He's going to try and keep Nandes off the starting lineup. But this is someone that we try and get rid of. Chiesa was a bad signing. I was hoping he would be a lot better. But Sigankov is at least twice as good as Chiesa in my opinion. And Nakajima is at least three times as good as Chiesa. So there is no more space for Chiesa in this team. He is going to leave us anytime soon. He has a five-year contract still running, which means it will be a big offer, hopefully, that comes in for him. And then we move on onto the bench. We have players like Pereira, who I really like. He's not going in anywhere. Nandes is not going in anywhere. He's going to be the major substitution for Sander Berger. He's probably going to come in in a lot of games. Hermoso and Gbamin were amazing last season. We're going to keep them. Um, we go down a little bit more. Hudson Odoi has been nothing but a disappointment. Absolute disappointment. He is going to leave us as well if we do get any offers for him. We go on. Tomiyasu, another player, as you guys remember, and then Van Aanholt, and that is going to be it. We have already lost a lot of players last season in terms of contracts running out. Players like Speroni are not a part of this team anymore, and that's how it should be. Let's move on to the last piece of this puzzle, and that is Eder Militao. We are bringing in the competition into our team, into that centre-back position. It's going to be interesting who is going to be the main player in that centre-back spot for us, or we could possibly switch to three at the back. If we do bring in Eder Militao, we can switch to three at the back. I'm not even kidding. I'm genuinely thinking that is a viable option for us. So we go in here and we're going to offer them a player swap just in case. Um, actually, do I want to do this? Probably not. I'm going to offer them Chiesa though. They can take Chiesa. I, I would take a straight swap. I would take that immediately. Ah, they're looking to bring a winger, striker, or fullback. I just said that... I just offered you Chiesa. He's a winger. What the hell? I'm not going to offer any of these boys. I can offer you Hudson Odoi. How about that? Do you want him? They want him. Plus 26 million. Uh, no. That's not happening, dude. That is not happening. Can I just offer a transfer fee? No, I can't offer just a transfer fee. That's stupid. How about 12 million? What are we saying? No, they want 25 million plus Hudson Odoi. That's a bit much, you know. That's a bit much. This is stupid. I'm going to offer them 16. Please accept. Come on, man. I'm offering you Hudson Odoi. Come on. Nope, they're not doing it. So we're going to end this negotiation because I can't offer a regular transfer fee anymore. We're going to come back into this Militao deal and try our best to sign him later on. It will take at least a week for us to be able to go back into that deal right there. Okay, the preseason tournament, boys. Here is the part where we rake in the money. Again, 8.6 million in that set preseason tournament. We do have some big games coming up, though, as soon as the season starts. The first one is going to be in the FA Community Shield against Manchester United. Oh, my God. What is that month? We have United, we have City, we have Tottenham, we have Arsenal, we have Brighton, we have United. As you guys know, the two-game simulation rule applies again this season, only up until April. For those people that were asking in the last episodes, why has Johnny stopped simming games? I only sim two games a month until April. After that, the control is in my hands. And that makes this season, the career mode, very, very exciting. Because obviously, through simming games, we get a lot of results where we could have gotten better results. And then it turns out to be a very, very intense season. And that's the way that we're going to do it again this year. We are going with the same strategy, which has been working. And I really hope that this season we can reach new heights. I want to win the FA Community Shield. I want to win the UEFA Super Cup. I want to win everything except the Carabao Cup.
that one can just go. Kuyate has left the club, boys. He has gone to Brighton. He has signed a pre-contract agreement with them last season. We still have the 58 million in our club, waiting for the moment where we can finally sign Eder Militao. And I hope that that day is going to be coming in quite soon right here. Now, obviously, in a pre-season pre tournament, I don't really care that much, boys. So we're going to go ahead and sim through this a little bit um, to be able to make an offer for Eder Militao again. Hopefully, it's going to be anytime soon. Dortmund, Villarreal, Real Betis are our opponents. As soon as we get past Betis in the calendar, if we do get another game to play, that means we are through into the next round. I would expect my team to do well, especially in preseason tournaments. We tend to smash everyone. Last season, we beat all the big teams 2 1, 1 0, 1 1 draw. Makes us go through into the semi finals against Valencia. Now, we should have a couple of transfer offers, and yes, we do. We have an offer for Tomiyasu, and we have an offer for Van Aanholt. Now, Van Aanholt, I will just accept. I'm not looking for more money. Tomiyasu, they offered. 9.4 million i think we can negotiate a little bit more out of this i think we can potentially get up to 14 million for tomiyasu so let's do exactly that we're gonna say 14 mil and let's see if they accept this um without the without the one right there here we go submitting the offer please please sign tomiyasu sign with the club just leave yes Perfect, 14 million for Tomiyasu. I will take that, that is nearly double his price tag. And that is a really good amount to get rid of a player that I just didn't like. We get a massive offer for Hudson Odoi. 24 million is the offer from Brighton. We're gonna negotiate this one. I could have accepted it straight away because that is a really good offer from Brighton. But we're going to try and negotiate a little bit more out of this. We're going to say 30 million because it seems like Brighton has too much money right now. Let's see if they do accept this. 30 million? No, they say 25.5. Let's say 28. Huh? How about 28? 28 is a good amount for a young, very talented player. Very talented, but terrible stamina, which makes him unusable for us. Uh, they just wanna they just don't wanna budge here. We're gonna say we're gonna say 26, alright? I don't wanna bottle this. 26 million. You gotta ex It's just 300 k more! But then again, you can say the same thing about me. Why don't I just accept the 25.7 instead of banging on for 26? I'm so stupid. Well, let's hope that stupidity doesn't carry on into this Militao deal right now. This time around, we're not gonna offer a player swap. We're gonna offer a straight money deal. 35 million. Let's see what Porto says. They have sold him to Real Madrid for 50. We have signed him for 35. I know it's a lot of money, but I think he's gonna be worth it, boys. He's definitely gonna be worth it. He is growing, so he's gonna reach that value anytime soon. We're gonna negotiate right here. We're gonna try and bring this man into the club. I think he's gonna be a massive signing for us. Um, it's gonna improve our team, and it's gonna give us the ability to switch to three at the back if we want to. I have been playing three at the back lately on Ultimate Team, so maybe that's a thing to do. He's happy with an important position. That is perfect for me um he wants a five-year contract of course we're gonna accept that boys five-year contract is always great no release clause perfect and now in terms of his wages they actually ask for 53 as the camera turns off and for once i didn't mess it up now a 53k that is actually a decent amount for such a talented player we're gonna remove the bonus submit the offer and hopefully He's signing with the club. Yes, Eder Militao has joined Crystal Palace, Luka Jovic and Militao. Those are some big boy signings, boys. That is amazing stuff. We still have 24 million to bring in a new left back into the reserves team. We are yet to see what happens with the deal of Van Arnold and Tomiyasu. But for now, boys, Militao is in the team. And look at these stats. 85 aggression, 78 interception, 79 acceleration, 76 agility, 91 jumping, which is amazing. Decent reactions, good sprint speed, amazing stamina, great strength. This guy is going to be something special. Great slide tackle, good stand tackle, can play right back as well, which is probably what Real Madrid planned to play him in. High defensive work rate, 
This is just a perfect defender. So we're going to move past Valencia and whoever is going to come against us. If we do make it into the final, we do make it in there. We have Leverkusen as our last opponents. For whatever reason, every game is fine until the final. And in the final, our team always struggles. But we have won on penalties 4-3. That's the first trophy of the season. One trophy out of how many? That would be two, three... Premier League 4, FA Cup 5, and then Champions League 6. Imagine if we win all six trophies. And yes, I didn't mention Carabao Cup on purpose because no one cares about that one. We do have a transfer offer for Tomiyasu and now another one from Sevilla for Hudson Odoi. Now, Tomiyasu, we're going to jump in there and negotiate immediately. This time, I'm not going to make a mistake like that. We're going to say we want 14 million again. Um, I think he, he should have been sold. Why hasn't he been sold already? That's weird. He should be gone. They accepted the 14 million price tag the last time and it works out again. So I'm kind of surprised that he hasn't left yet. Okay. Um, Hudson Odoi, though, this is, this is one where I was just being a little bit stupid. So let's jump in there and let's try and get rid of this man. Um, Hudson Odoi, 25 million is going to be my offer right here. If they accept, they accept. If they don't, that's fine. 25 million. Is he going? Yes or no? Yes, he is going. Hudson Odoi is going to Sevilla, who have actually yesterday been beaten by a team out of the Czech Republic. I believe it was Slavia Prague. I might be wrong on this one, but they have beaten them 6-5 on aggregate with the most insane and intense game I've ever seen. Like, like that stuff was incredible. You would love to be in a stadium to watch your team pull that off. That would be a crazy moment in your life that you would never ever forget now we do have some injured players Hudson Odoi was injured uh, Van Arnold has been sold finally we do get the money into the club now after do after we after we do sell these players we're gonna definitely bring in a new left back into the reserves team that is gonna be the plan and then maybe possibly even another center back for the reserves team I mean I do like Riedewald but He's not getting better, is he? He has been stuck at that 77 for a long time and he's 23 years old. I'm expecting a little bit more growth right here. Okay, Hudson Odoi's transfer uh, talks have broken down with Sevilla. That's not what you want to see. And I still keep accepting these transfer offers and nothing really works out. We're going to ask for 25 million against Arsenal as well. They should have the money to pay this man. So hopefully this time it does work out. He will stay in the Premier League if he does accept this. No, they won't. Oh, okay. They don't want... Hmm, that's interesting. 24 million. Come on then, please. He's worth 24 million. Are you kidding me? Okay, there you go. Unai Emery accepts it. Um, he has gotten Hudson Odoi for 24 mil. I don't understand what's going on right now. Tomiyasu transit talks have broken down as well. What the hell? Why can't I sell these people? What's going on here? Now, in terms of that left back position, boys, I want to go for someone that I remember having a very, very interesting card on FIFA this year on Ultimate Team. And it was Marcelo Saracci. He had a foot miss card, which looked very, very good. Now, he has a 14 million release clause. Um, we could sign him straight away with the release clause. He's a left back who's five foot eight tall. Not one of the tallest ones, obviously, but... He is supposed to be quite the beast. So we could sign him up and bring him into this team right here. And the question is, is he high rated enough? We do have some time to scout him though. Do I just scout these players or do I just sign them? That's the question. Well, we are three seasons in. We have finished the first two seasons. What would his rating be? I don't expect him to be around 80. Actually, maybe he might be around 80. 80 might be the rating where he's at right now. So what do I do? Do I just go for the transfer fee? 14 million? That's not a lot, you know. I'm not I'm gonna pay a lot more for any other left back, I think, that is like more well known. I wanna go for someone that is not that well known. So Sarachi is the one we're paying the release clause. Please don't be 65 rated. That would be awful. We jump in there, negotiate the contract right now. Let's see. Please be decent. I'm gonna tell him to be a rotation player. Hopefully he doesn't run away. Please don't run away. Oh, they're actually happy with that. Ooh, that does mean that he's not that high rated though. Hopefully he isn't low rated. Um, we're gonna give him a four year contract. He's 22 years old. He's gonna be happy with a four year contract. Yes, he is. And um, we're gonna accept the release clause right there or no release clause, so to say. 
then we're going to jump into the um, wages. They're asking for wages. That is perfect. We're going to remove the bonus, submit the offer. Please join the team, Sarachi. Nope, he hasn't yet. But now he has. A new left back has joined Crystal Palace. Massive, massive transfers have been done in this transfer window to take Crystal Palace to the next level. We are exactly going for the positions where we did need changes now. The question is, is he good enough? Is he high rated enough? Please be around 76 at least. Yes! 79 rated. Let's go. He looks amazing. Let's take a look at... Ooh, okay. Thank you to whoever suggested him in the comments down below, boys. 96 acceleration, 86 sprint speed, 84 stamina, great aggression as well, decent composure for a left back, um, good ball control, good dribbling, great marking, good slide tackle, good stand tackle, left back from Uruguay. He has high attacking work rate, so this guy is going to push forward. Now we have two little guys down the wings, which is completely the opposite of what, what I usually want to have in there because crosses are a very apparent thing that happens against us multiple times. But I have a lot of fun with these players, so we're going to sign them. Sarachi 5'8", Dodo 5'5". Five five. That is going to be an interesting partnership in our defense. Why is Joao Felix injured? How long is he injured for? Like, I've seen him injured for quite some time now, going into this season. Hopefully it's nothing serious. I haven't seen a message. Oh wow, he's only back in four weeks. Joao Felix is injured for four more weeks, which means we're going to miss out on him. On all these incredible games. No. Ah, oh, that's terrible. That is bad news. How did I not see this message? I guess what we got to do right now. Can Nakajima play Cam? I think he can. He's going to be... Ah, his passing isn't the best, is it? Yeah, his passing isn't the best. I guess we're going to just pop in for now. It's going to be Andreas Pereira at Cam. Joao Felix is going to be on the bench. Um, that sucks that he's injured like, right now. But hey, that's the way it goes sometimes. Hudson is still on the bench. I can't believe that guy's still in my team. Um, Sarachi is going to join onto the bench right now. Um, hopefully, uh, Joao Felix will be back sooner than later. Um, we will need him. But Pereira, I think, is going to be a great replacement for now. He's going to do well enough. Um, obviously, now that we have brought in all the new transfers, I don't think I'm going to make another transfer in this transfer window. Let me know about the fan objectives, boys. Now we have the new players. We have Jovic, we have Sarachi, we have um, um, Edar Militao. So go ahead and make your suggestions. I personally believe with this new formation, we're going to have a lot of fun, man. We're going to have so much fun playing with this team. I truly believe this is going to be one of the most amazing seasons with some of the most incredible goals. Now, let me be completely honest. I'm never going to top that goal that I scored with Townsend. It's not going to happen. But... Hopefully, it will be a very, very entertaining season for you guys to watch. That is going to be it. It is a transfer window episode today. That is what a lot of you guys absolutely love in these types of career modes. I'm definitely looking forward to the fan objectives from you guys. So please, please, hashtag fan objectives in the comments down below. If you see some good fan objectives, just put some likes on those comments and they will be considered. Um, a, lot, a lot of people don't seem to like the fact that um, the fan objectives affect the career mode itself with like Milivojevic coming into the team. So if you guys don't like that, just give thumbs up to the fan objectives that um, only affect... Uh, the forfeits actually that only affect what's happening to me nothing that happens to the career mode itself so also if you do put fan objectives in if you care to do so put the forfeits in there but obviously as always we take the fan objectives first and then we go for the forfeits in the comments down below otherwise it's a little bit too much of a mix-up so fan objectives today tomorrow we'll have the forfeits that's how we will do it i will pick all six fan objectives today so make sure you get your comments in boys i cannot wait to play with jovic and zaha up front with freaking felix behind them nakajima tigankov it's gonna be such a great season i'm looking forward to it and i hope you guys are as well have a great day and yeah continue living your life the way that you do don't let don't get affected by people by terrible terrible people that do terrible things in this world continue to live the life that you love take care peace